Hello everyone, and this is going to be a quick video on an explanation for G-Sync versus G-Sync compatible versus V-Sync and combinations of the three. So to start off, I'm going to start off with G-Sync. I'd say G-Sync is one of the best possible monitor technologies you can have on a monitor, period. And this is because G-Sync matches up your monitor refresh rate, which is how many times your monitor updates per second. So how many times your screen will um, display an image per second. And it matches that with the FPS of your game. And this is controlled with NVIDIA's drivers and NVIDIA control panel. So G-Sync is a great option because it eliminates stuttering in your game and it also eliminates screen tearing, which is little um, artifacts in your screen. So little, uh, I guess, lines or random cuts in the image that don't look natural. Um, it eliminates all of those. And trust me, once you've played on G-Sync and then you've moved back, you can really notice the difference. So I I'd say if you're gonna go for anything um, and you have the budget, cause G-Sync is quite expensive, I'd say go for G-Sync, definitely. Now, the next option is G-Sync Compatible. G-Sync Compatible is a relatively new technology that uses AMD's FreeSync on monitors, um, but also allows it to use G-Sync. So what this does is on certain compatible monitors, I'll have a link to it in the description, um, which monitors are compatible with this, it allows them to use G-Sync which is an even better option than G-Sync actually for budget gamers because it's a much cheaper option because AMD FreeSync is much cheaper than G-Sync. And that brings us to the third um, point, which is V-Sync. V-Sync is a little bit different than the other two. V-Sync isn't a monitor technology because V-Sync doesn't have a variable monitor refresh rate. VSync actually limits your game FPS to the, and it caps it to your um, monitor's max refresh rate. Now, what this does, uh, in addition, is that it helps smooth out your FPS, but in doing so, it also adds both input lag and it lowers your FPS overall. So, if you're on a tight budget, any monitor will do this because it's not a monitor technology, it's just a NVIDIA or uh, in-game setting. And it, it, it's not a great option, but if you really wanna eliminate all of the screen tearing and um, FPS stuttering, um, and you don't worry about those costs, then go for it. Yeah, you can use VSync all day and it's perfectly fine. But for people in the case who have a G-Sync or G-Sync compatible monitor, um, a lot of questions might be asked on whether you should use G-Sync with V-Sync or not. So what this does, if you use them at the same time, is with for any FPS within your monitor refresh rate, it will just use G-Sync like normal. But if your FPS goes above your max refresh rate, then it will turn on VSync. Now the problem with this is it still adds that input lag and FPS drops overall. It will add the stabilization again, but it'll be a somewhat um, big difference as soon as your FPS goes above, in my case, 144 FPS, then it'll suddenly turn on VSync and then I'll have a little bit of input lag and it'll be different. So what I would recommend, honestly, would be to just cap your FPS at, I'd say, 2 FPS lower than your max refresh rate. So in my case, since I have a 144 hertz monitor, I would cap my FPS at 142 in whatever game or um, NVIDIA control panel that you want to use. And this will allow G-Sync to run perfectly well, and you would have V-Sync off. And what this would do is it would just allow G-Sync to run perfectly, and that's it. And it won't have any input lag, 
or any more input lag than you normally experience um, and it wouldn't have any of those uh, FPS lowering and this this same thing works for G-Sync compatible just you have to be aware that monitors that are using G-Sync compatible technology have a minimum range for FPS as well which means that if your FPS drops below a certain amount your monitor can no longer support that and it will suddenly get stuttery and choppy and everything like that and have screen tearing so you want to make sure you're always going to stay above your minimum refresh rate when you're using G-Sync compatible alright guys so to wrap things up I would recommend using G-Sync or G-Sync compatible with an FPS cap um, around your monitor's max refresh rate if you really if you really want to use vsync you can but i wouldn't consider it a viable option for most gaming purposes because it lowers your fps by so much and it adds input lag which is crucial to have the lowest input lag and the highest fps possible in most games and i would rather take a little bit stuttery um game and a little bit of screen tearing than having my fps lowered which means that if you can, use G-Sync. That, that's basically the summary of this whole video. Use G-Sync with an FPS cap. Don't use V-Sync. Alright guys, see you in the next one.